bitch, you wanna trap like, whoa, yeah. Hey guys, Parfax here. Alright, I know I haven't posted a video in what seems like forever. I had some technical difficulties and basically my hard drive was messing up. I didn't have room. Um, I had to move my actual game to my solid state, which is a very small solid state, blah, 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 things you guys really don't even care about. But I'm back. I got everything situated. And I'll be bringing you videos fast-paced every day for the next however long. Hopefully, and that's at least the plan. All right, so let's get started. Today, the video, as you can see in the title, is going to be, Should I Buy Black Desert? I know there's been quite a few people that have done something very similar, but... Those of you, my fans, that a lot of them are Elder Scrolls fans, or those of you that just watch this video because you saw the title and you've never seen me before, um, I get invested in games, and I get very strong opinions about them. I'm not big on pay-to-win, um, which this game has arguably a pay-to-win mechanic, depending on if you're reading Reddit or not. So, we're going to dig into that a little bit, and then you will get my thoughts whether this game is worth it or not. Alright, first, things you should know. One, this game is going to suck you in for a long time. What I mean by that is it's going to be a game that you're going to have to play a lot. It's not something that you can just go around, play every once in a while, and think you're going to be at the top. This game has no level cap. Now, levels are extremely nerfed, so where they're isn't a level cap there sort of is like right now 55 is basically the level cap and to get to 55 let me tell you it takes a while okay there is one or two people I believe on EU that are 56 I'm not sure if NA's have any there's none on my server let's see no 55.63 is the highest on our server there's there's gonna be some 56's but there's not gonna be that many so 55 is basically the cap right now um, I currently have three level 50s, which I'll show you right here. I have Lady Red, the real Brad Pitt, and Dark Goddess. Dark Goddess is a sorceress. Brad Pitt's a berserker, and Lady Red is a ranger. Brad Pitt is my 53. Um, so I've been trying to experience most of the classes. I did play KR, so I do know a lot about them. But um, you're going to want to at least invest time into one character. I have three level 50s which are technically the soft cap and then, then the leveling starts to get harder sort of like vet ranks in ESO and my level 50 ranger even if I get halfway decent gear on her is not going to be nearly as good as a level 55 and a 56 all right so that's one thing to know another thing is you can play this game as a PvE game and this game is a PvP game at the forefront but I mean there's a lot of PvE aspects actually most people you, you know you have to do PvE because that's the way to get a lot of money I mean you can look here you have housing where you can get storage we'll look over here in Alta Nova because I have a lot more over in Alta Nova um, when you look these are all gathering materials and stuff I've crafted and I just made I've made a few of these these uh, corrupt ruby necklaces, they're pretty good. And they sell for $4 million a piece. So you can make a ton of money. Alchemy? Here, let me, let me go here for the alchemy. Uh, yeah, look at these. $39 million. These are actually cheap. Did they sell it? There was one that was like $200 million. Maybe they just took it off and used it themselves, which is probably a good thing. But I mean, look how much money these are. These are... 39 million it's a ton so PvE is needed in this game and you can horse tame you can farm like there's little plots like this that you can put in the world that allow you to farm plants look at this these are all plants that these people farmed so they'll come out here and they'll get their sunflowers and they'll they'll breed their sunflowers they'll pick their sunflowers and make lots of money you get workers which you see my worker list here um, arts and human, yes. 
but you send them out, they mine materials, they bring them back, they sell for a lot of money. So the game does have a ton of PvE, even though the game is PvP at the forefront. There's guild, there's guild bosses, there's world bosses. Um, for the most part, you're going to do a lot of grinding mobs. But there is PvE in the game. Okay? Another thing, end game. Those of you that have played a sandbox, like, let's say, Elder Scrolls, not necessarily ESO, but maybe like Skyrim. What do you do when you get to the end? Okay, this game has PvP as well, but if you don't want a PvE, or PvP, what do you do? Well, you can, if you want to tame horses, you can try to become, let's see, the wealthiest person on the server, like this guy right here. And this is only, um, it's not server, but it's, um channel based and online but you can go fishing you can make boats you can sail the ocean you can explore and these are just small fraction of things you can do you make what you want to do i mean so if you're a person that needs a straight storyline needs to have that sand or that uh, theme park type of feel where you've got to go do this do this do this this game is probably not going to be for you this game does not hold your hand, it does not tell you this is what you need to do, it says here's the world, go do it. A lot of people have problems with that. If you do not have problems with that, then you might want to look into this game. Another thing, there is no fast travel. If I want to go to, let's see where my next quest is. Next quest is, well, I guess it's in the same town. That doesn't count. But let's say I want to go to Altanova from here. Altanova's way over here. Right here, Altanova. I have to physically either walk or ride a horse. There's no fast travel. Now, a lot of people my age don't mind it because a lot of older games didn't have fast travel. And it's kind of that nostalgia of going place to place. It has not bothered me one bit. Every once in a while, like when we're doing guild missions, I don't want to run from Altanova to do manchas all the way over here. I don't want to run here to do manchas. I just don't want to do it. Not when I'm over here sitting in Altanova. It'll take me 25 minutes to run from there. War is tragic, but some. But. So that's a bad thing for some people. Most people don't have a problem with it. Okay, let's get into the good things. The looks of the game. The look of this game is absolutely incredible for an MMO. I haven't seen an MMO that has this good of graphics in I don't know how long. And it doesn't take a monster of a computer to run it. A lot of people in my guild don't have great computers. They can still run it. They have some seriously old machines that can still run this game. You're not going to run it on high graphics. You might not be able to have um, all the player effects, you know, all that kind of stuff. But you can still run it and still play it and still enjoy the game. might not look quite as good, but you can still run it. I played Blade and Soul. And Blade and Soul ran like garbage. I don't know what it was about it, but I have a decent computer. I mean, I have a 980. I have a decent CPU. Um, and it ran like complete garbage. This game runs a lot better. Okay, PvP. If you love PvP, you love fast-paced combat, I mean, I, I haven't found a game that's any better. This game's PvP is so much fun. I spent so much time just pvp in this game, and you can do it outside of a city whenever you want. Now, on that same line, there's a karma system. I'm a freshly new character, so my karma is only 1,416. has a 300,000 max, and you will hit it by the time you hit 50. But every time you kill somebody, it's roughly 60,000 karma. Once you go negative, then once you're in town, guards will start attacking you. And out in the world, any player can hit you for no reason. Let's go ahead and run to this here. So see, i got to run over here. Nothing to do it but to walk it or get a horse and ride it. But, yeah, so if you become negative, other players can kill you with no penalty. You cannot attack them. If you attack them, you get a penalty as well, so you go even farther negative. So basically, you have to kill mobs to get your karma back. All right, and the last thing that I'll say on the good category is the game is constantly evolving. 
Um, we do not have all the updates that Korea has. And you can go on looking look in Korea and what they've come up with. And it's astonishing. Like the things they just released lately. I mean, we're getting, I think it's um, I think a Pegasus or some type of, not necessarily flying mount, but it's a gliding mount kind of like you would in Blade and Soul. Kind of, you don't fly, but you can kind of glide. Um, they're having a water area, just like every other MMO, pretty much. Um, the Korea has dungeons, and it's got uh, the desert. When you go to the desert, you have to drink water, or you'll overheat, and at night you have to have a um, camp, or you'll get cold. I mean, it's just, the game feels real. Like, we can go up to this, let's go to this, just this mob right here. He's not just standing around, look, I mean, he, he, he's looking like he's doing something. I mean, they just made the whole entire world so alive. And this is probably my favorite thing about the game. Everything is doing something. These guys over here, let's see what they're doing. They're dan just dancing. Kind of, I'm um, assuming probably some type of ritual that this goblin leader over here is, is doing. But I mean, everything is so completely alive and it just... It, makes you feel like you're part of the game so my final thoughts are should you buy this game if you are not afraid of the sand sandbox buy it the game's thirty dollars you that's half of a call of duty that's two month subscription to elder scrolls it's nothing as long as you have the thirty dollars buy it try it and look up videos for it I don't have all the videos that I need up and they will be coming, but this game is super intensive. It does not tell you everything you need to know. It says basically you're going to do it and you're going to figure out how to do it and if not, then you're just not going to do it. They don't hold your hand. They say here's the world, go do it. Find things out that you didn't know was in the game. Just search and you'll find things and you'll find out how to do things by trial and error. Um, oh, one last thing I did forget to talk about is the cash shop now this is a big hot topic especially on reddit and mainly outfit no mainly for all right the main big thing is under this outfit right here it is the ghillie suit basically let's see if i can get a it's not going to allow you to see exactly, but it tells you right there. The three-piece set effect, gathering plus one, not a big deal. The big deal is the four-piece set, hiding the character name. Okay? Basically, this game, at least this part of the game, is mostly fought in the, um, the woods. So this ghillie suit makes you really hard to see. And then it also allows you to hide your name. So when somebody attacks you, or you want to sneak up on somebody, you can pretty much sneak up on somebody and they don't see your name. So if you try to run away, um, they won't see your name in big bright letters like they will everybody else running away. So it does make it harder to see. Is this pay to win? It's more pay to win than Elder Scrolls. But in my opinion, is it completely pay to win? No. Um, it's pay to win at first when you're new because ghillie suits are very hard to see. But the one thing it does not hide you from is the minimap. So you can still see where they are in the minimap, and that's what I use. Once you get good at the game, you get comfortable. One, you'll be able to start you'll be able to start seeing the ghillie suits running around. And two, you just pay attention to your minimap. That's it. Um they do have some other things, the outfits, um, any outfit gives you 10% experience, gives you a couple other stats, not that big of a deal. The 10% experience is sort of a big deal, but in the long run, it's it's not it's not a big deal aside from, like, the ghillie suit has a lot more people up in arms than something like the suit. Uh, I play a game, and I've already bought a suit for my Berserker because I spot, started with the Ranger, they gave me one, it's kind of garbage, but I switched the Berserker, and it's going to be my main class, and I decided to get him uh, an outfit, let alone for the 10% XP, and also because it looked pretty freaking awesome. But alright guys, that's going to be the video. I ran it a little bit, but I wanted to get a video out, tell you guys that I'm back, 
going to be doing a guide. The first guide I'll probably do will probably be a Berserker guide. Um, but please let me know what you want in the comments so that I can start getting content out to you. Know what you guys want to see first, um, whether it's class guides, whether it's overviews of workers, how to make money, which I'm sure that'll be a big thing. Grinding spots. I already had a few people come up to me and like, are you the grinding guy from ESO? I'm like, yeah, that was probably me. But uh, let me know what you guys want so I can start putting out the content. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.